Outdoors Life. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Radio, 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 radio. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 29th, 2014. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. Alex is going to be joining us uh, with two brand new special reports because what we see happening at the border is just not only amazing hypocrisy when you look at what's happening at the border versus what's happening at the airports, for example, or what's happening within that 100-mile border that they've said is constitution-free around the perimeter of the United States. Alex has a report on that as well as the planned collapse of our economy. Now, of course, Petraeus has talked about this. Nancy Pelosi went to the border this Last weekend, just yesterday, she was at the border talking about how they're going to uh, essentially incorporate people in and how this is not a crisis. This is an opportunity. Well, yes, of course. Rahm Emanuel has always said every crisis is an opportunity. If you're some kind of a Machiavellian control freak like they are, they always use every crisis. They manufacture these crises, and we know that they are manufacturing this crisis. This is something that the Border Patrol Union uh, f officials that have talked to us, as well as, uh, and mainly it's Border Patrol Union officials who talk to us. The uh, typical employees are being intimidated and gagged by threats from the government to not talk about this. But let's look at just one example of the hypocrisy that we see coming out of these people. New York is going to provide free legal aid IDs to undocumented immigrants. Now, of course, undocumented immigrants is what they call illegal aliens. They're not just undocumented, and they're not just immigrants. They're here from another country. They're aliens. That's always what they, the legal term that has applied. They're not immigrants. Immigrants implies that they're coming here to live permanently. An alien says they haven't been given permission. And, of course, that's what illegal says about it as well. But this is what New York is going to do. And, and... This is really about gerrymandering and buying votes. I mean, this is gerrymandering on steroids. You can't get the voters that you want in sufficient quantity. Just import them into New York or into Texas or into California. And that's what the New York City Council is going to do. They've earmarked $4.9 million of the city budget to give legal assistance to foreign-born New York residents facing deportation. Uh, the city will provide that aid for, again, their favorite term, undocumented immigrants. Now, this is what they're going to give them. They're going to give any quote-unquote resident the document, documentation needed to open a bank account to sign a lease or to get a library card. They're also, I'm sure, going to give them driver's licenses, voting IDs, because that's the entire point of it. This is just the city of New York setting aside five million dollars. And of course, Whereas this is reported, Christian Science Monitor and elsewhere, they're saying, this is just wonderful. This is uh, going to give legal assistance to these people who desperately need it. Because why they need legal assistance? Because they're here illegally. They're breaking the laws when they come in. But then, of course, when Boehner talks about suing Obama over executive action, Nancy Pelosi calls that subterfuge. It's not subterfuge to help people violate the law, to help create a voting block that they couldn't otherwise get by just convincing people so they want to create a permanent underclass, a welfare state, collapse the economy as well as collapsing the border. This is about making NAFTA a fact. NAFTA has been the law for 20 years. That's what uh, David Petraeus said in, in London last week. We played that for you. He said, oh, of course, NAFTA has been around for 20 years and now we see this unification because what comes and what he said was what comes after America? North America. And he was talking about NAFTA. So they look at this, and for 20 years, they've had, in their opinion, a legal unification of Mexico, America, and Canada. Now they want to make that actually a fact. So they're just bringing these people in. As Nancy Pelosi said yesterday, what we have is a community with a border in the middle of it. Okay, well, actually, I would say that's a former border. It's not really a border. So there's a couple of different things going on here. We need to look at how they're going to roll out their 
secretive plans. And I think this gives us a lot of insight into both that and their hypocrisy. We're going to have reports from Alex Jones and from our reporters at the border. Stay with us. chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, June 29th, 2014. As we were just saying in the last segment, the hypocrisy of Nancy Pelosi going to the border in Texas and saying that what we have here is a community that just happens to have a border running through it. No, it's a former border that's running through it. And we're going to look in the show today at the hypocrisy, the different ways that Homeland Security, the same agency, treats people who are at the border. Nancy Pelosi talked about the dignity that we need to treat people with. And I agree, we need to treat people with dignity. Where have you seen them worry about dignity internally in the United States? The federal government is doing everything to rob us of our freedom and dignity. They're trying to create a B.F. Skinner type of control grid internally in the country. And yet, when people come across the border, anyone bringing anything into the country that they wish, they have a very different standard. We're supposed to respect them with all authority. But of course, this is about setting up NAFTA. And we're gonna look at the hypocrisy of what's going on. Just consider that just last week, Obama announced that he's going to send half a billion dollars in aid to Syria to foment revolution there, to submit to foment disruption in that country. At the same time, is he doing anything at all for these border towns and Texas. Now, John Bowen was down there and he has this report. We are here at the county seat of Falfurious, Texas, a small town whose success is largely due to the developer and pioneer Edward Cunningham Lassiter, who in 1893 owned one of the largest ranches in Texas at 350,000 acres. As the San Antonio and Aransas Pass Railway expanded south to his ranch in 1904, Lassiter founded Falfurious, an Apache word meaning the land of heart's delight possibly due to the sweet butter creamery Lassiter developed in 1909. Or perhaps it refers to filfarious, Mexican slang for dirty and untidy. One thing is for certain, both meanings apply here, as the county and local ranchers struggle to bankroll, defend their lives, and bury the bodies of the rising tide of illegals crossing their land every day. It was the loss of oil and gas revenue, compounded by the amount that we spend. And that, that figure is de dealing with autopsies, it's dealing with wear and tear of the vehicles, the sheriff department, the JPs, the magistrates, the death certificates, all the, the paperwork that's entailed, getting out to these areas that are very, very remote. I personally have been taken to pronounce a body when the, police, the sheriff officer with me says, oh, there went the transmission. And we had to call a record to come get us. Thank God for Border Patrol. They were able to take us to where uh, the immigrant was. And a lot of these immigrants are dying of dehydration. Is that the main cause? Uh, we refer to them as the elements. You know, it's compounded by the 100-plus weather, the grease out there, rattlesnake bites, 
and a lot of them we order autopsies because we don't know uh, what was the cause of death. We now do autopsies on everybody and DNA on everybody. As far as the, uh, the immigrants from other parts of the world, can you speak on that at all, what your experience, what you've seen from, say, uh, China, India, Russia, possibly? Uh, we have reports from the Sheriff's Department. They can confirm that they've uh, apprehended people from over there, and they've also found people. But uh, the Sheriff's Department is very aware of that they are here, and they're coming in. Has violence increased in the past few years as a result of the aggressive increase in immigrants? Yes, definitely. Matter of fact, uh, uh, I just got a report a couple of days ago of a local rancher that uh, they broke into his ranch. And, uh, and we are getting more and more reports of either agents that are being accosted or uh, deputies that are, are having to, uh, finding resistance, you know, from these individuals. Uh, they're young. They're 30 and under. A lot of them. Uh, year to date, right now, I believe we have 33, and we're about to go into July and August. You know, if you're familiar with Brooks County, we've got 944 square miles, and it's very, very rough terrain. And of course, being from South Texas, anybody that knows about rattlesnakes, we got some big ones. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it's very, very difficult because the anti-venom is out of Corpus Christi, mm -hmm. and that means that we'd have to get a helicopter down here and try to get them within that golden hour so we could save their body. Wow, the cost of that must be staggering. Of course, and all that incurs on, on the county. And that's why all these expenses, you know, uh, we don't budget for. And we've had to, and the law says we have to pay for them. And ha have you asked for grants from the federal government? We have gotten nothing from the federal government. Uh, Governor Perry's office uh, last year stepped up to the plate and they helped us with $150,000 to share. We were in Austin, Texas this week and they're going to help us with another 150000 That's to defray a lot of the costs that the sheriff department has. There was a boom time with the gas and oil and the creamery. In 2007 when I took office, our taxable value was $1 million. One billion, ninety-three million. Last year was five hundred and forty-one million. We've lost more than sixty percent of our oil and gas. So that that makes you know, and we live by oil and gas. In 1959, we were the only one in South Texas that had an all-concrete stadium. Mm -hmm. We had four dealerships and we had a hospital. Are you aware of the administration of Obama? How they're professing to the Central American countries that if you come across the border and proclaim that you're a dreamer, uh, especially these younger kids that are coming across, that you will receive amnesty. Uh, I think that you can't uh, make the rules just to, uh, to apply them. If you're going to be fair, let's be fair to everybody. And if you're going to allow people to come in, you should have standards, you should have a program in play that would allow them to enter the country legally, not illegally. Are you aware of the exploding swine flu now in San Antonio in this area? What's your health and human services doing to take care of that? Well, we've been there before. A couple of years ago, the H1N1 it was here and we were prepared. Uh, we've got a wonderful medical exam in the valley that, that keeps us abreast and, and we always take a proactive approach. We've got a lot of illegal activity by human smuggling and we've got, uh, it, it is a problem. The problem that we've got to contain is that we just don't want people dying in our county. And so we're trying to do everything humanly possible to stop it. We've got uh, a good friend of mine that goes out and puts water stations at the ranches so at least they can have water. How effective has the Border Patrol and Homeland Security been in your county? We have a wonderful presence of Border Patrol. They do a great job of drug apprehension. You know, that, that's what their Brooks County is number one in the nation for. The only bad part about it, we're not a border county, so we don't qualify for any federal assistance. And so I've, I've made the scenario many times, including to the governor's office on Tuesday, that if you've got a scenario where Border Patrol agents are following somebody and they get bit by a rattlesnake, they'll take him to the hospital, they'll put agents there to, to monitor him, they'll foot the bill but an immigrant dies called Brooks County. Right. Uh, we were just in Brownsville and McAllen last week, and we discovered that the Border Patrol was paying uh, via a credit card for uh, illegals that had come in, m mainly women with children, babies. McAllen, Texas is yeah. tapping their resources. It's going to take an effect on their money, on their budget, because you don't budget for stuff like that. I mean, you can budget some, but at some point, you didn't see or foresee the amount of immigrants coming over. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and they're, they're paying for bus tickets, they're generating power for them, they're putting up tents, they're feeding them. Wouldn't you say that's exploitation at a high level? 